where, where are we? And, um, and yeah, why, why are we in a pit? I don't know, Aaron. Why are we in a pit? <laughs> Aaron told us to get here. Why, why are we excited to be in a pit? <laughs> My name is Cindy. I'm a staff scientist at Earth Justice, an environmental law nonprofit working on climate justice issues. So right now we're standing at the edge of Holy Cross, uh, part of the Lower Ninth Ward. Uh, right here you've got New Orleans, just uh, upstream. This is downstream of the Mississippi River. You'd be headed all the way to the mouth of the Delta. And then to my left, you have the Industrial Canal, which separates the Bywater neighborhood and the Holy Cross neighborhood. So the Mississippi River Delta was built over the last, let's say, 10,000 years or so. And the way that it did that is that it delivered all of the sediment from upstream where it, it, where it was carrying stuff, sediment that was eroded from mountains, from other, from other land upstream, and it carried it all the way down to here. All sediment is not the same. You've got really, really fine particles such as clays, and you've got a lot of the bigger stuff, like sand, like what we're standing on right here on this batcher. And when the river is carrying all that sediment, it's not carrying each of those different grains the same way. The finer stuff, like the clays, they stay in suspension all the time, or most of the time. And the heavier stuff, the particles, they need more energy, more speed or flow from the river to get carried downstream. So a very simple way to think about it is that when the river is this low and the flow is pretty slow as you can see, it's probably not carrying nearly as much sand as when the river is really high and there's a lot more energy coming through and pushing that sediment. When the river is high and there's a lot more energy, the sand is lifted into suspension and it can flow downstream and it can deposit somewhere else. And that's how you have different um, land formation from sand and clays and different kinds of deposition as the river flows faster and slower and faster and slower throughout the year and through different seasons. And then in this jar, which as you saw earlier, we filled it with water and mud and you can see the bottom half inch or so has about has a lot of sand. It's all of the heavier stuff has settled to the bottom because the water in here is flowing basically very slowly. And the rest of the water here is still very brown because there's a lot of clays, a lot of finer particles that don't settle easily because they're so small. So if we let this jar sit for even longer, so we've only let it sit for about 10 minutes or so, you would probably start seeing different layers um, settling at the bottom with the heavier grains at the very bottom and smaller particles at the top. And you can sort of see that here where you see darker and larger grain particles here. And the very, very, very top of this layer has a lot smaller particles.
microcosm of what a river entering the ocean or a bay looks like. So here what happened is probably it rained or the river kind of drained from all of the rocks here on the Batcher and flowed down, got interrupted by this cool little log here, and it flowed all the way and created this beautiful deposit and braided streams. And here you can even see where you've got the kind of rougher edges of the sand. Um, this is called a cut bank. That's because the water is probably flowing, shooting really fast across here. So it's cutting, like eroding basically into the bank. Whereas on this side, the water kind of slows down because it turned a curve and it deposited some sand, right? Because there's less energy to push that sand as we talked about before. And so you've got what we call a point bar. And then further down here, you see these beautiful braided streams. As they hit the, the bay or the ocean, basically kind of the open water body, they deposit these different little lobes, delta lobes. So here's like kind of one sort of example of one. There's a footprint on it though. And then here you've got a really nice little delta lobe starting to form over here. And if you look at, for example, you can go on Google Maps and look at the Wax Lake Delta, and you'll see these beautiful geometric patterns of delta lobes as the, um, the delta, the water hits the Atchafalaya Bay. So right now we're standing on uh, a levee. So the levee is built up naturally through the Mississippi River, depositing sediments. And the levees are also uh, artificially reinforced by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Now the role of the levee is to basically prevent the river from flooding uh, the residential areas such as Holy Cross, the Bywater, and Uptown. called Central City in New Orleans and we're at the intersection of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and Willow which is just at the edge of Claiborne and then if you go further down that way you'll hit um, the Lower Garden District and the CBD, the Central Business District. And right here on my left is a giant culvert. You can see this kind of elevated surface and that the land around it right here on the street is a lot lower than the culvert. And the reason for that is subsidence. So what is subsidence? Subsidence is basically the land surface that sinks. And that can happen a number of ways all over the world. Um, and it can also happen across really large spatial scales or in very, very small micro, at a micro scale. So the, the land that we're standing on right now used to be fed by the river. During the spring floods, the river from all the way over there would flood the floodplain that we are standing on and it would feed um, sediment and nutrients, basically food for all of these marshes and swamps that used to be here. When we reinforced the levees of the river, We've basically stopped the river from being able to do its job in sustaining these marshes and swamps. And we also have drained the area of water because we can't, humans can't live on water. We needed to build industry and businesses and streets and homes. So by dewatering all of these swamps, we've basically allowed it to compact because these swamps and marshes, if you think about it, are basically really mushy stuff. They're organic material that are, you know, mostly made of like plants and trees and a bunch of mud, and they're a lot easier to compact. Basically, the space between the pores of those 
all of those sediment grains, all of that organic material gets smushed together. And that's how you have subsidence. So by building on top of it, you've basically stopped the river from doing its job, feeding those marshes, and that land is just sinking. So that's what's happening here. The land here used to be at the same level as the culvert has sunk because there's nothing that is allowing the marshes beneath us to stay at the same elevation as it used to be. It's very, yeah, remember it? No, I'm too, too young. No, it always did flood, right? Yeah, but yeah. you're right, it is sinking. It's sinking, because but I remember it used to be higher. You used to have to look down. in Central City in a construction pit and what's kind of interesting about sitting here is that you can see the subsurface you can see what's under the street and so you're looking at these layers of soil that are mostly like clay and decomposed marsh that have been delivered and deposited by the river over hundreds of years thousands of years now What's interesting about being here in this construction pit is that there's no water. It's completely dry. And that's pretty unusual given that we're below sea level, right? The river is right over there. And in theory, there should be water here. As we drain the water from these old decomposed marsh and swamps, the sed these sediment layers are compacting. So notice just how, um, tight or like compacted all of these sediment layers are. They're not kind of how they would be if you were to walk in a marsh or swamp where things kind of feel fluffy and light. You can almost kind of like, they almost feel like a sponge when you're walking around a marsh or swamp. Here, all of these layers have been compressed so tightly together that they look like this. In many other cities, you're actually standing on solid ground, on bedrock. Here, you can see just how vulnerable we are because this soil is very compactable. Look at this. Yeah, you won't touch it again. This is what we're standing on, this soil. So you see the layers over there, you see basically the street, right, the asphalt and the concrete. And then below that, you'll notice the kind of sandy and clay layers from the old marshes and swamps that used to be here. Well, when it rains, the water doesn't infiltrate across that concrete surface, right? It's not able to infiltrate and go into those sandy layers, sandy and clay, muddy layers underneath the street. So what happens is in a marsh, when you have water flowing through it, it maintains the water level and the land level elevated. But when you dewater a marsh, when you dewater the subsurface, right, the surface that's underneath the street, you're basically allowing all of those layers to compact and compress, and that causes subsidence, or that accelerates subsidence under the street that we stand on. So what you see going on in New Orleans is kind of a double whammy. One, we've cut off the river from the floodplain, right? From being able to provide the sediment and nutrients for these marshes to stay elevated and grow and build land. And the second thing is that we're constantly draining water out of these layers of old decomposing marshes. So you're subsiding and compacting all of this sediment without keeping up elevation with the water and sediment from the Mississippi River. Thank you.